In this lecture, we're going to talk about factoring polynomials. Previously, we learned that if you multiply two binomials together, you can use the FOIL method to write it as a polynomial. So for example, if we have 2x plus 3 times x minus 4, we can FOIL that out to get 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. The two terms that are multiplied together are called the factors of the polynomial. So 2x plus 3 and x minus 4 would be factors of the polynomial 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. So to factor a polynomial is basically just the process of finding the factors of a polynomial. To begin with, we're going to talk about factoring common monomials. The first step to factoring any polynomial is to factor out common monomials. So if you see a common factor from each term in the polynomial, you should be able to factor it out. Let's do some examples. We start with the polynomial 2 plus 4x, and we want to factor out a common term or a common monomial. So what can we factor out from both 2 and 4x? We could factor a 2 out from both 2 and 4x, and so we could rewrite this 2 times 1 plus 2x. Next we want to look at the polynomial 3x squared plus 6x plus 9. Can you see a common term that can be factored out from these terms? And it looks like we could take a 3 out of each of the terms in this polynomial. So we could rewrite it as 3 times x squared plus 2x plus 3. Finally we have x cubed plus x. What can be taken out of both terms here? We could factor x out of each of these terms and rewrite it as x times x squared plus 1. We have some special formulas that we can use when trying to factor out polynomials. The first is the difference of two squares. If your polynomial takes the form of one term squared minus another term squared, so x squared minus a squared, you can factor that out to be x plus a times x minus a. Next we have the sum of two cubes. If your polynomial takes the form of one term cubed plus a second term cubed, or x cubed plus a cubed, you can factor that out to be x plus a times x squared minus ax plus a squared. Next we have the difference of two cubes. So if the polynomial is written as one term cubed minus a second term cubed, or x cubed minus a cubed, that can be factored out to be x minus a times x squared plus ax plus a squared. Let's do a couple of examples where we deal with the difference of two squares. Remember the formula for the difference of two squares is x squared minus a squared equals x plus a times x minus a. For our first example we want to factor out 9x squared minus 1. This looks like the difference of two squares. So let's look at the two terms that we have. 9x squared can be written as 3x quantity squared, and 1 can be written as 1 squared, so we can use the formula for the difference of two squares with 3x as our first term and 1 as our second term. So 9x squared minus 1 can be factored as 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. Next we want to try to factor 25x squared minus 16. This again looks like the difference of two squareds, so let's examine. The first term in the polynomial, 25x squared, can be rewritten as 5x quantity squared, and the second term, 16, can be written as 4 quantity squared, so we can use 5x and 4 to plug into the formula for our factoring. And so 25x squared minus 16 can be factored to be 5x plus 4, times 5x minus 4. Now let's try an example with a difference of two cubes. Remember the formula for the difference of two cubes is x cubed minus a cubed equals x minus a times x squared plus ax plus a squared. For this example we have 27 minus 8x cubed. We want to verify that this is the difference of two cubes, so we'll examine each term. 27 can be written as 3 cubed, and 8x cubed can be written as the quantity 2x cubed. So 3 will be the x value for our formula and 2x will be the a value. If we plug those into the formula we'll get that 27 minus 8x cubed can be rewritten as 3 minus 2x times 3 squared 
plus 2x times 3 plus 2x quantity squared. Now if we simplify this, we'll get 3 minus 2x times 9 plus 6x plus 4x squared. Let's do one more example of a difference of two squares. For this example, we have x to the fourth minus 1. Again, we want to verify that both terms are perfect squares. So x to the fourth can be rewritten as x squared quantity squared, and 1 can be rewritten as 1 squared. So we can apply the formula for the difference of two squares using x squared and 1. And so x to the fourth minus 1 can be factored out as x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. But x squared minus 1 is also the difference of two squares, so we can take that and break it down even further. So the final factorization for x fourth minus 1 is x squared plus 1 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. The next set of special formulas are called perfect squares. If you have a polynomial of the form x squared plus 2ax plus a squared, that can be factored out to be x plus a squared. And if you have x squared minus 2ax plus a squared, that is factored to be x minus a quantity squared. So let's do a couple of examples using perfect squares. For the first example, we have x squared minus 2x plus 1. What we want to do is verify that the first term and the last term are both perfect squares, and that the middle term follows the rule 2 times a times x. Since there's a minus sign on the middle term, we'll use the second formula above. So x squared can be written as x quantity squared, and 1 is 1 squared, and 2x can be written as 2 times x times 1. So this matches the formula, and we can use the formula above with x being x and a being 1. So x squared minus 2x plus 1 can be factored out to be x minus 1 quantity squared. Next we want to try the same thing with the polynomial 25x squared plus 10x plus 1. This time since the middle term has a positive sign we'll use the first formula above. We begin by verifying that the first and last terms are perfect squares. So 25x squared can be written as 5x quantity squared. And 1 can be written as 1 squared. And then we check to make sure that the middle term is the product of the square roots of the previous two terms. So 10x can be written as 2 times 5x times 1. So that matches with the terms above. So we can use the formula with the x value in the formula being 5x and the a value being 1. And so the polynomial 25x squared plus 10x plus 1 can be factored out to be 5x plus 1 quantity squared. Next we want to talk about a method called factoring by grouping. We're going to walk through the steps of factoring by grouping while we do an example. So we want to factor by grouping the polynomial x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3. The first step for factoring by grouping is to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. So for our example we will group x cubed minus 3x squared together and we'll group negative x plus 3 together. And notice if the third term has a negative sign like ours does negative x it goes inside the parentheses and we change to addition in between the two groups. The second step to factoring by grouping is to factor a common monomial out from each group. This should leave a common term in both groups. So for our first group we could factor out an x squared, leaving x minus 3 inside the parentheses. And on the second group we could factor out a negative 1, leaving x minus 3 in the parentheses. If you've done your factoring correctly you should have the same term in both groups. So see we have x minus 3 in both groups. This leads us to believe that we've done things correctly. And the final step is to factor out the common term. In our example the common term was x minus 3. So if we factor that from both groups we would be left with x squared minus 1 times x minus 3. Let's do an example of factoring by grouping. So for this example we have 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2. 
The first step is to group the first two terms together and group the last two terms together. So we'll have 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2. The next thing we want to do is identify a common monomial that we can factor out of both groups. See if you can figure out which monomial gets factored out for each group. For the first group, we factor out a 3x, and that leaves us with x minus 1 in the parentheses. On the second group, we can factor out a 2, that leaves us with x minus 1 in the parentheses. Since we have a common term on both groups, the x minus 1, this leads us to believe we're doing things correctly. And we can factor that common term, x minus 1, out, leading us to 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. The last topic we're going to talk about in this lecture is factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. The first step for factoring trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is to multiply the first and last coefficients together. So find the value of a times c. The second step is to find factors which we'll call little a and little b of ac which add up to give us the middle term b. So if we multiply little a and little b together, they should give us the same value we found in step one. And if we add them together, they should give us the middle coefficient b. Third, we're going to rewrite our trinomial. Instead of capital AX squared plus capital BX plus c, we're going to rewrite it as capital AX squared plus little ax plus little bx plus c. And then finally, we'll finish it by factoring by grouping. Let's do an example. We want to factor out the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 8. If we look at this trinomial, we see that capital A is 1, capital B is negative 2, and capital C is negative 8. We start by multiplying capital A times capital C, so the first and last coefficients. 1 times negative 8 will give us negative 8. Next, we want to find factors of that value which will add together to give us the middle term. So listing a few of the factors of negative 8, we have negative 1 times 8, 1 times negative 8, 2 times negative 4, and 4 times negative 2. If we add those factors together, negative 1 plus 8 is 7, 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7, 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2, and 4 plus negative 2 is 2. So we can identify which of these match our middle term where b is negative 2. So the factors that we're looking for are 2 and negative 4. We'll use these to rewrite the trinomial as x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 8. Since we know that 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 2, we can replace the negative 2 in the middle with the 2x and the minus 4x. Now we're going to factor by grouping. We group our first two terms together and we group our last two terms together remembering to keep the minus sign on the third term inside the parentheses, and we're going to factor a common monomial from each group. We can factor x from the first group, leaving us with x times x plus 2, and we can factor a negative 4 from the second group, giving us negative 4 times x plus 2. x plus 2 is a common term from both groups, so now we can factor that out, leaving us with the factorization x minus 4 times x plus 2. Let's look at another example. This time we want to factor out x squared plus 9x plus 8. In this problem, capital A is 1, capital B is 9, and capital C is 8. Why don't you take a few minutes and see if you can factor this out by yourself, and then click along in the lecture to see if you were right. We start by multiplying the first and last coefficients together, so AC is equal to 1 times 8, which is 8. We then look for factors of 8 that will add together to give us our middle term. So we start with the factors 1 and 8, negative 1 and negative 8, 2 and 4, and negative 4 and negative 2, which add together to give us 9, negative 9, 6, and negative 6 respectively. Since our middle coefficient is 9, we'll use the first set of factors, 1 and capital 8. So we'll use these to rewrite the trinomial in the form x squared plus x plus 8x plus 8. Now we'll factor by grouping. We group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. So x squared plus x plus 8x plus 8. 
and then we're going to factor out a common monomial from each group. From the first group we can factor out an x giving us x times x plus 1. From the second group we can factor out an 8 giving us 8 times x plus 1. So we have a common x plus 1 between the two groups which we can factor out giving us x plus 8 times x plus 1. Now note if the leading coefficient a is equal to 1 then the factors will always be of the form x plus little a times x plus little b as we've seen in these previous two examples. Now let's look at an example where the leading coefficient is something other than 1. We have the polynomial 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. We start by multiplying the first and last coefficients together so 9 times 4 gives us 36 and then we want to look at the factors of 36. Some of the factors of 36 are 12 and 3, negative 12 and negative 3, 6 and 6, negative 6 and negative 6. Note that there are more than more factors to 36 than this. We just listed a small representation hoping that we'll find what we're looking for here. If what we're looking for is not here we would need to list more factors. When we add those factors together 12 plus 3 is 15, negative 12 and negative 3 is negative 15, 6 and 6 is 12, and negative 6 and negative 6 is negative 12, and we're looking for the group that add together to give us our middle term of negative 12, so the factors that we're looking for are negative 6 and negative 6. We'll use these to rewrite our trinomial as 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4. Now we'll finish the problem by factoring with grouping. Group the first two terms together and the second terms together and find a common monomial to pull out of each group. For the first group we can pull out a 3x giving us 3x times 3x minus 2. For the second group we can pull out a negative 2 giving us negative 2 times 3x minus 2. Now we have a common term of 3x minus 2 in both groups which can be factored out to give us 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2 which we can rewrite as 3x minus 2 quantity squared. Note that we could have used one of the perfect squared formulas to do this as well. So there are multiple ways to factor out some problems. For our last example we want to completely factor out 8 times x squared plus 6x minus 2. Now the first thing that we want to do is factor out common monomials. Notice that each term in this trinomial can be divided by 2, so let's factor a 2 out. That will give us 2 times 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. And now we can factor 4x squared plus 3x minus 1 using the method we've talked about in previous slides. We start by multiplying the first and last coefficients together, so 4 times negative 1 gives us negative 4. We list the factors of negative 4, which could be negative 1 and 4, 1 and negative 4, or 2 and negative 2, and then we add those factors together to see which gives us our middle term. So negative 1 and 4 is 3, 1 and negative 4 is negative 3, and 2 and negative 2 is 0. So the factors that we are looking for are negative 1 and 4. We can use these to rewrite the trinomial. So now we have 2 times 4x squared minus x plus 4x minus 1. We can continue by factoring by grouping. We group the first two terms together, 4x squared minus x, and group the second two terms together, 4x minus 1, and now we want to factor a common monomial from each group. We can factor an x from the first group, leaving us with x times 4x minus 1, and we can factor a 1 from the second group, leaving us with 1 times 4x minus 1. So we have a common term of 4x minus 1 in both groups, which can be factored out to give us 2 times x plus 1 times 4x minus 1.